Uh, President-elect Obama has, I think, uh, already created, not just in the United States, but across the globe, uh, a wave of hope, uh, a wave of uh, uh, very high expectations uh, about renewing America, changing America uh, for the better. And uh, this, of course, uh, applies uh, to Turkey as well. A lot of people in Turkey uh, are concerned uh, with uh, President-elect Obama's position uh, on the Armenian allegations, uh, on other aspects of bilateral relations between uh, Turkey and America. Uh, but uh, uh, they feel uh, that uh, Obama is going to be a good president for the United States. Uh, he's going to be a good leader uh, for uh, global issues and therefore also uh, uh, a good uh, American president uh, for Turkey in general terms. Of course, uh, the points of specific interest uh, to the Turkish public uh, are uh, what he does with respect to uh, Armenian allegations in the U.S. Congress and whether or not uh, he continues the Bush administration policy of cooperating with Turkey in the fight against PKK terrorism uh, in uh, Iraq, based in Iraq. Uh, beyond that, of course, uh, Obama's uh, approach of engagement, dialogue, uh, emphasizing the soft power of the United States, uh, these are all uh, assets, I think, that will make him uh, hopefully a very great uh, president. Our thanks go out to Congresswoman Schmidt and Ambassador Loalu. In May of 2008, Sabri Bodai, a Turkish barber living in Saudi Arabia, was sentenced to death on the charge of offending Islam. We would like to turn to Matthew Slutsky, a contributor to the Huffington Post, which is one of the most widely read online news sources in the United States. Slutsky and the Huffington Post were the first to widely report this story in the U.S. Matthew, thank you for joining us. Hi, my name is Matt Slutsky, and I'm a blogger in the United States. I write for a site called the Huffington Post. A couple months back, I was sent an article by the Turkish Coalition of America about a Turkish-born citizen who was living in Saudi Arabia, who was a barber. Um, this guy, his name was uh, Sabri Bagday, and he was uh, overheard during a conversation in, in his barber shop, um, cursing God or cursing Allah, and someone who overheard him uh, took it to the police, and he was arrested. And I'll just read a little bit from this post on the Huffington Post that I put up uh, back in May of this year. Sabri Bagday, a Turkish national who had worked in Jeddah for 11 years as a barber, allegedly insulted God during an argument with a Saudi client and an Egyptian neighbor. Bagday, who did not have a lawyer in court, denied cursing God, but the three-judge panel of the lower court regarded the testimony by the Saudi and the Egyptian witnesses as sufficient proof that Baghdad had committed a crime um, as defecting from Islam. And what's worse is the court ordered him to be killed. And when this story came across my desk, I decided that I'd take a look around the, the Western and English speaking press. And what I found was that no reporter had done a story on it. No blogger had talked about it. The only um, English reference I could see to the, to the story was from Human Rights Watch. So in my post, I quoted from their release some of the information to give it some more substance. Um, and I put up a post uh, along with my brother on the Huffington Post and um, was able to, to um, help pitch the story to American speaking press. And it got picked up in some major newspapers that were English speaking and had an international purview. And this, uh, this story of Sabri Bagday got some traction and um, ultimately his, uh, his appeal was overturned and he was set free. So it was a, a really, you know, it was a privilege and an honor to help um, when, I, when I read about the story and I, and I learned that there wasn't any, uh, anyone really talking about it. And I was, I was proud to work with the Turkish Coalition of America on pushing the story out to reporters and once reporters got wind of what was happening and um, was, were able to, to read the information that the Turkish Co Coalition of America provided along with the Human Rights Campaign, uh, excuse me, the Human Rights Watch, it, this story really got some traction and 
we were able to save this gentleman's life. And I was really proud of the work we did, and um, I urge you to take a look at the blog post at thehuffingtonpost.com. Thank you for that insight, Matthew. We are sure that Sabri Bodai and his family appreciate your efforts to bring his case to the public's attention. On a lighter note, jazz has been a lesser known but important bond between the Turkish community and the African American community here in the nation's capital for decades. Prior to the civil rights movement of the 1960s, it was against the law to have mixed race audiences attend concerts together due to segregation. One of the few places, if not the only place, that mixed audiences could listen to music together in official Washington was at the Turkish Embassy, given that diplomatic rules exempted these venues from Jim Crow laws. Because of their passion for jazz, Ahmet Ertegun, the founder of Atlantic Records, and his brother, Nesuhi, influenced their father, His Excellency Munir Ertegun, the Turkish ambassador to the U.S. in the 1930s and early 1940s, to host noted African-American musicians for mixed audiences at the ambassador's residence. In honor of this legacy and in memory of Ahmet Ertegun, Ambassador and Mrs. Nobby Shansoy hosted an evening of jazz earlier this month. Here is a brief clip from the event. <laughs> This concert was symbolic of the ongoing efforts to strengthen the relationship between the African American community and the Turkish community here in the United States. This is a relationship that the Coalition and the Cultural Foundation are working to build.